Thank you. All right. I'd like to call our meeting to order. I think we have a quorum, so we can start. Um, are there any citizens comments? Bob? Okay. I've been asked to read this letter to the school committee. Dear honorable school committee members, representatives from the select boards of Berniston, Leiden, Norfield, and Warwick recently met to discuss the hiring of a new superintendent of schools and a proposed new position of business manager for the Pioneer Valley Regional School District. We would recommend and urge the school committee to take bold steps in a new direction by supporting the hiring of a shared interim superintendent and a shared interim business manager for a one-year term on a trial basis. We know of at least one Franklin County School District, Maha Regional School, who would be willing to share administration, and we think that there are others. We urge the school committee to accept such offers. Revenue increases from the state are minimal, and with budget constraints, the Pioneer Valley Regional School District needs to keep control of expenditures. Sharing the two positions with another school district will help reduce administrative costs. Why a one-year contract? Because the PVRS district then would only be bound for a single year if it is determined that there is no financial advantage or there is a great loss of control by the school committee. We believe Pioneer Valley Regional School can be a leader in what the state would view as a progressive move. All of Western Mass schools are struggling with increasing budgets, which ultimately rely on increases in property taxes of its citizens. Taxpayers have supported the education of our youth. However, as the student population decreases, we need to keep increases in school budgets to a minimum. We trust you will give our position serious consideration and will act accordingly. Respectfully, the select board from the town of Berniston, select board from the town of Leiden, select board from the town of Norfield, and the select board from the town of Warwick. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Are there any other citizens' concerns? If not, moving on. Um, there were minutes from our October meeting that were included. Does anyone see anything that needs to be repaired, fixed? Yeah, Martha. Okay. On page three, microphone, Martha. Is this on? It is. On page, on page three, uh, under Roman numeral eight, number two, policy subcommittee, L'Etoile noted and so forth. That's the same wording that appears on page four under school committee comments. So I don't think we need to have it both places. All right, do you have any, it's which should you rather have it be under? Oh, I don't think it applies to, let me see, two has to do with the policy subcommittee. And that comment doesn't have anything to do. Well, maybe it does. Yeah, I, I don't know where, where in the meeting she mentioned it. Does anyone remember? I don't. Is anybody else sharing? No, I just have. Hello? I just have a comment in that if she mentioned it twice, it should be in the minutes twice where she mentioned it each time. Oh. In one in okay. the policy subcommittee and one in the regular committee. I hadn't considered that. I didn't think she mentioned it twice, but it's perfectly possible she did. But so. she might have been reporting to the full committee what they did at the policy. See what I'm I okay. don't recall, so. She's not on the policy subcommittee, so she didn't mention it in any policy meeting. I know that. Yeah, ah, that's true. Okay. So that's why I thought that yep. it probably should be on page four. I think you're right. All right, so Is we that? shall strike that. Yes, no? Strike it on page three, Delete. leave it on page four. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That's all I had on. Okay, anybody else have anything? Oh, we just talked about Robin. 
No, we need to ask you a question. Do you remember if you spoke um, in the minutes of last week, last month, there was a question on whether you spoke. Um, Latoile noted that she's been looking into Mass General Laws relative to school committee meeting with the student council. She will report back to share some links with the committee chair to make sure the committee is meeting their legal obligations. Would you have said that twice or just no, once? I would not have said that twice. Okay. So we don't think it would be under policy subcommittee because you're not there. Correct. But it might have been at the end under committee comments. Does that sound like we made a right decision? Okay. Good call on our part. All right. Is there anything anybody else has to say on the minutes? Sharon? Make a motion that we make a motion we accept the minutes as corrected. Okay. Yeah. All right. All those in favor? All right. Unanimous. All right, um, accounts payable was, was in our packet as was the expenditure report. Take them home, look at them, and if there's any questions, um, this is important, it's money, and we don't have a lot of that, so make sure you do look it over, and if there's any questions, to call Ruth. So we don't, you don't want questions now? N um, if you have questions, yes. I do. All right, ask. Um, on it's what? It's very hard to find your way through the packet because it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three kind of thing. Okay. Oh, sorry. It's hard to find your way through the packet because it, it's not numbered sequentially, right? Right. So um, I'm going to try to. This is the expenditure report you're on? The yellow one. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, accounts payable and I'm sure it's just me getting used to what things are um, so I'm on the page that shows the cafeteria food for Pioneer Valley it's like what? page 16 it's way at the back okay. they're numbered at the bottom well it says page 5 but it's definitely not page 5 in the packet oh, I, I think it, each school may have a section yeah, yeah, that's why it, yeah. Under. So there's a total PO amount, $4,622.77. Do people see where I am now? Yeah. Okay, We're still looks like it. here. My question is really just that it says that the budgeted amount for that line item is zero. And there's a bunch of places where there's cafeteria expenditures, but it says the budgeted amount is zero, and I'm just confused. So we, um, I think we, you're supposed to talk into a mic too, Ruth. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. That, yeah. That's okay. It's I good. wasn't planning on talking. Mm -hmm. um, no. So what happened this um, this year is they changed the cafeteria and the way um, we input the revenue side, the money that is collected. And so that hasn't been up and running at all. And so the staff is still working really hard to try to get that um, lunch fund balanced. And so the reason there's no revenues is there was nothing put in the system um, this yet this month, uh, this year. And it's because of that. Gail, can you? Do you remember what the um, plan was um, with the name of the software? But they changed it. And remember the Cafe Terminal? Cafe terminal but it, there was upgrade or change? Oh, I know why. Because um, we were having one person sub, um, input the information now. and the company of Red Firm a great deal of time. We think we have it, but now it all has to be input manually right. into the system. Okay. Right. So we, we kind of don't know where we stand in terms of income and output 
on an important line item, right? Right, yeah. and at the moment, it's reporting something like $40,000 off or something. So it's just not, and it kind of goes in line with the work that we had Stacy doing, which is trying to clean up the books and make things um, uh, uh, transparent and accurate. And so we're really not quite there. We're close, but with the food service we're waiting, um, <coughs> Kelly got back for them to go through that. Okay. Okay. I have a question underneath that where it says PVRS activity fund. Again, it says budgeted zero, PO amount $9,800 basically. I, I'm just confused why there's such a big expenditure with nothing budgeted. That's a really good answer because the activities fund in the um, have their own bank accounts. So... I'm not sure that this is all a treasurer thing because I don't see those accounts. I really just see the general fund and mm -hmm. um, the. Uh, so those are separate bank accounts, and I can't give you an answer tonight, but I can look up the yeah, answer to find out. Yeah, pretty I disconcerting to see the zero and then the almost ten grand. That's about right. Yeah, <clears throat> it's a huge amount. Right, but don't forget that the this comes through the general fund somehow it because we give them a group of we give them money you know it gets put into their bank account mm -hmm. so it's a if they cut a PO for it mm -hmm. then the PO comes out of the general fund so maybe they need like a separate report or something so yes. that you can see yes. what's going on okay yeah All right. there definitely should be a separate report and I know that um, one of the secretaries in the main office is the one that takes care of all of that uh-huh okay all right, I'm just going to keep going. I'm okay. going to try to ask questions whenever I have them. <laughs> um, Karen Scanlon, that's just a lot of travel, $1,500 in travel. She spent $1,500 That's what it says, a PO, $1,499. So um, I think that's a shared travel line with all three of the people that are in the office. And it just happens to be under her name. But I, I will double oh, check okay. that. I, there's no way she it's has like, 15000 in go? travel. like, where did she go? Did she go? Right. Yeah. Like no, I think we put one travel Technology line in. in the Bahamas or something. Right. How they drive there? 1499. Yeah, I'm just wondering. $1,499. Yeah, that's a lot, especially in t such a tight budget. Okay. Yeah. All right. Down below that, Greenfield Community College under PVRS Tech Annual Sup Renewal. $8,220. I just don't know what that is. What do we do with GCC that we pay them $8,000? Um, part of it could be the, the program that was started um, for the, what was the name of the, Jean, what's the name of the course that um, John's teaching? Yeah, oh, the accounting course, because um, we didn't have a teacher, so he um, connected with GCC and got a course. And I think that was 4000 or $5,000 to have that course happen. And so there must be some more um, courses in that. But I'll, I'll take a look and see. Okay. You know, but that I know for a fact that that... Um, so we that, hired a GCC faculty member? Or? No, what he did was he made a negotiation with them, and he <laughs> the, the books and the program cost that. They have a, a, an instructor coming one day a week for no cost to us, and then John is overseeing the online component for the other four days in the week, for, for the other time. So we have an online accounting class happening Correct. with GCC. Correct. Hmm. I don't think I knew about that. Yeah, that got developed in the spring because we had an accounting teacher and it was all going to go and then it fell apart. Okay, so maybe in January you could report back to the curriculum personnel about what's going on with That's that. That's a good idea. Okay, all right. Actually, we should report to you on all the online classes. Yeah, right. that would be great. That was going to happen in November, but I know I lost track of it. And I'm just wondering how Rosa Kessler's experience was in the district because I used to be the Kessler's teacher a long time ago. Oh. So I'm just curious. Did Rosa come to the district? Oh, okay. 
Okay. So did Pip was it Pippi that came? Did Pippi come? How was that? Was that great? Okay. Yeah. I just have a fondness for that family. Oh, that was a great workshop. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Those were my questions. And just in general, this number that's on the sign off, right? The two thousand ninety five. Yep. Nine fifty seven. Is that supposed to match the number at the end of this? No. No. Okay. All right. There's a little sheet behind it which rolls uh, into that number. If you look on the next, that number, you see that that group should add up to the other. Interesting. So the number at the end here is 261332 and 11 cents. This is 295957. I know that's the one that um, that we're, we need for accounts payable for this month. Mm -hmm. But they should what, generally match up, well, right? I wonder if there's two manifests there. I only see well, one. Only one to sign. Okay. You sign this. I'll sit there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that it, Sue? Okay. <laughs> I know it's easier to shake. Um, does anybody else have any questions? If you go home and look them over and have questions, don't hesitate to call Ruth. Does everyone feel that this expenditure report is easier to follow on the orange? Remember, this was something new we did last month and thinking that it might be easier. Print small. They probably will tell us our eyes are old, but what can we say? <laughs> David? Oh, sorry. I like it. I think it needs notes or at least a verbal assurance that these encumbrances are not junk numbers because I see two million four hundred thousand dollars that maybe superintendent could uh, use for other needs, and I know that's not true. No, that's what we actually salaries and everything were mandated to actually have. So we well, I, I know it takes time, but if if this could be updated so that all the commitments that we know we've made are encumbered, we can get to. Shall I start over? Yes, please do. <laughs> If the encumbrances were all accurate we, and, and were up to date, yep. then you and we would have a, an idea of, of any funds that might be available to use for needs such as uh, shared business manager expenses of um, search committee, um, and they keep coming at us. I, I assume that special needs is accurate and it shows underwater. said to leave it on but um, the other thing about this uh, report is that when each each month those encumbrances are going down so there are things that could potentially be encumbered like um, uh, the physician salary which was very generously don't you know left back in the budget so there are there are those kind of things that I think did get encumbered that we can free up. My fear of freeing it up is I don't want people to think that we have that money to spend necessarily. You know, so we, we probably did encumbrances a little tighter, um, but that was so that we could make sure we hit that bottom line at the end of the year. But I can go back in and, you know, all the salaries are encumbered. Um, the the um, the things that aren't are like athletics and stuff. Well, these last two columns are meaningless unless accurate. So you could either stop um, publishing them in the report or make them accurate. Another thing that I would find helpful um, 
assuming an expenditure is incurred on a straight line, it's sometimes helpful to know what percentage of the budget we are through. And that helps okay. give a tool to say, hmm, uh, you know, for this expenditure, which is monthly and roughly the same, yep. uh, we're going over the cliff. So. Okay. okay. Yep. Thanks. Good ideas. Sharon? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Are there any other um, line items um, similar to Ruth Pote that I have not put back in that we're holding back just in case? There's, um, in part, there is that um, encumbered salary that we had um, for Pearl Rose. That there was a fraction of that um, that's still in there. So what I can do is I can. I'll take them out, but I want to identify them for you because not that would, you know, that would be some good. of that salary yeah. is still being yeah. used because um, Bob, another principal was yeah. hired in part for that position. Yeah. That would be very helpful for us to have the figures that um, relate to that, any positions and any monies that are there that aren't being used yeah. that are kind of there for a rainy day or for something that pops up that we hadn't planned on. Well, we need to know that how much of that money is there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sue, you had the question. I was just confused by the heading at the top. It says 1031 to 1122. But then as you look at the columns, it says 71 to 1122. Because that's a, the initial budget line. But that's it. That <laughs> 721 will always be there because it's where it started. And Seven it's the months. range from that to from July 1 to now. Okay. And next time it'll be a range of July 1 to December. Okay. Okay. So, so this just says 1031 to 1122 at the top to show that it's different from the last one we saw, which Correct. is also to make cumulative. It easier right. for Great. you to yep. disseminate the two. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Well, Any other questions? David, pick here. up. Can you share that with us? No. Um, <laughs> range to date. Yeah. So my question is the third column, which in the heading says range to date, and then is empty beneath it. Uh -huh. I think right. the column that begins with 17,400 belongs under it. Okay. And the 1031 through 1122 describes the range to date. So that's right. in that a little bit less than a month period, that's okay. what was expended. All right, that makes sense. Everybody f full of answers now? Maybe? Okay, moving on. Okay. Um, warrants are going around, I think. They're somewhere. They're, they're over here. They're over there. Okay, that's great. Um, revenue report. Hmm? Revenue report. Is that no, different than what we just? Because we're still working with Stacy. Okay. How is she coming along, and and how where is she with working with, so, with our people? Yeah, okay. with Holly. So is this on? Yep. Um, so Stacy. Did um, none of the bank statements were reconciled um, in the past? So um, Stacy got all of the bank statements reconciled up until this fiscal year, and then she left that those bank statements for um, our other treasurer to actually complete when she gets back. And um, she also created notes and processes for Stacy to follow, uh, not Stacy for um, Kelly to follow. And her plan is to sit down with Kelly and go through the bank statement, be there with her, go through the notes um, with her. Unfortunately, Stacy got a new job and Kelly was sick. So we haven't quite had that, um, that time, but I, I think they're planning definitely for next week and, and having maybe one or two dates together. So that's kind of where we're at with the revenues. We really don't have a good handle um, right at the moment. Um, Stacy has a pretty good idea about things, where they are. 
um, but again we don't have an official um, culminating uh, from this from her work I would hope that by next month we would have that so we would know where yeah. we are is that right um, I'm hopeful yes the okay. only thing well we'll know the general fund not necessarily the lunch fund okay baby steps yep. um, which brings us to the lunch report um, Gail do you have anything you can update us in that's that's yeah, yeah that's that's new in and great news as you see there is we just talked about there's no formal lunch report but we are preparing daily for our national school lunch review which happens December 1st and December 4th and everything was uploaded into a security portal yesterday so everything that they need ahead of time by November 20th was done yesterday and we're in the process of compiling a binder that has an excessive amount of information to have ready for them when they come. Um, while I'm up here, because principal reports are next, I see, we um, are doing an early childhood NAEYC accreditation visit tomorrow. So we'll, I'll switch hats and go to that review tomorrow. And that's at Pearl Roads and Berniston and Renee and I will be there at both schools for that. Good luck. Thanks a bunch. Um, that brings us to appearances, and our two students are not with us tonight. Yep. I understand Ella is not feeling well, so it's probably a good idea she's home, and I haven't heard from the other one. So um, we're just going to have to tell them they are very much needed and wanted, and Hope that we can see them in December. Excuse me? And miss. And miss, big time. Um, so now we have our students and our, I think, I mean, our teachers. Let's do the teachers because they're going to talk about academics and then we'll talk to Gina after that. I think they're doing it as a collective. Group. Are they doing it collectively? Mm -hmm. now, now or later? Now. Okay, now. Go for it. So <laughs> So we're going to talk about MCAS a little bit. Um, so the last two years in the district, um, our district worked on the park testing uh, at the elementary level. And um, so this year, park was not in place. So MCAS 2.0 is what the state is using at the elementary levels of grade three through eight actually in ELA and math. And those are computer-based testing or la at least our district participated in the computer-based testing um, at the elementary level. And um, the high school continues to work with the traditional or the old MCAS in the ELA and math. Um, science has been the old paper-based, but that is in transition as well. So because this is the first year for MCAS 2.0, uh, the new MCAS different types of questions, um, higher standards, more complex, uh, and testing questions out, they are not holding districts accountable. So we do not receive a level this year. I anticipate that we will next year. So, um, you know, we're looking at the data that we're getting and um, thinking about how that relates to the work that we're doing in our classrooms as well as how we compare to the state. So I'm going to let Jean talk for just a little bit about that. So. So in your packets, we um, printed out for you some districts and state comparison results that kind of shows you how we stack up to the state overall. Um, on the first side, where it begins with English language arts grades three to eight, through eight, you see that our English language arts results are pretty similar to the state results in terms of the proportion of students that meet or exceed expectations. Same is true for our mathematics in grades three through eight. And the third chart, science and technology, covers grades 5, 8, and 10 in which science is tested. 
and we look fairly similar to the state overall in all those three areas. Um, it's nice to point out that the proportion of our students who are not meeting expectations, that means falling into the absolute lowest category, tends to run below the proportion that fall into that category in the state overall. On the flip side of that, um, because that basically covers grades three through eight, we also included the re results for grades 10 as kind of the culmination of our system. Last year, we did quite well, as we usually do in English language arts. Last year, n all of our 10th graders were either proficient or advanced on the ELA MCAS. Um, science also is an area of strengths for us as a district. In grade 10, um, that's sort of our flagship in terms of the, the best that our students do in comparison to the state. I think we run about 16 points above the state in the number of kids proficient and advanced. Mathematics in grade 10 is still an area where we have some room to grow um, in terms of the numbers of kids who we have scoring at the highest levels. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about some of the differences um, as we look through the data that we've received and they have released some questions, just to actually a fraction of the questions, but even so it's very interesting to analyze. Um, and there are some fairly profound differences at the elementary level I can speak for. and. Um, one of these differences is in the writing that is expected of the children. Um, we are going to be adjusting, spending time, um, professional development time this year, um, looking at our writing program because in past there has been a lot more personal narrative um, writing being expected of children and now it is very um, much more heavily slanted towards literary analysis an opinion where you are um, providing examples, um, data, or not data, um, examples from the texts and comparing multiple pieces of literature. Even nine year olds are comparing multiple um, pieces of literature, finding themes, um, writing about um, stories from another character's perspective. It really is quite sophisticated, and um, this is one of the areas where I would say that the state has um, lifted their expectations, and the abstraction and the analysis is um, indeed sophisticated for the developmental level, and we need to think about this and how we're going to teach this. Um, and the other thing that I want to say about Warwick is um, last year, in the two months leading up to the MCAS, um, w academics were well on the back burner and we were coping with um, our community um, and the tragedy that had occurred up there. Nevertheless, I am proud to say that Warwick did um, just fine, in fact, very well. And I'm happy to share any data, specific data, with anyone who's interested to come and talk to me. And I just wanted to make a, a few comments about uh, the, the science tests. Um, the science test uh, uh, continues right now with a lot of uh, legacy questions from uh, the old uh, standards, and uh, they are starting now to introduce uh, new questions. And, uh, and, and the district overall did quite well and, and in it, and I think that's because the curriculum plan that uh, is uh, coming into focus right now that uh, the teachers have been working quite hard on and uh, the ste STEAM units that are being developed uh, throughout the district and all grade levels are, are doing uh, already some good things in the classrooms. And one of the things that I noticed in, in looking at uh, scores at Bernston in particular was that um, the, the units, excuse me, the, uh, the strands and topics that students did the best on were those that uh, we did hands-on thematic units, um, inquiry-based. So that uh, that's really where all of the uh, the research shows that we should be doing, and uh, and, and the students are responding and, and scoring quite well, um, and in Burnest in particular, we we had uh, twenty percent or more of our our students scoring above the state standards in in science, and I think it's because of what we're we're doing right now. With it. Okay. Question. 
questions? Questions or comments? So is math just hard or what? <laughs> What's going on? I mean, relatively, we're weak in math compared to the state. We are. I think um, it's important, so that's sort of the picture of math at the 10th grade level, which remember is just one cohort of students in one year, which is about 60, 65 students. Um, I think it's important to look at the math program overall, and there's very different results from grade level to grade level, so that's part of the work we do as principals with our staff is to really dig down and figure out where the areas are where we have room to grow, um, and then address the kinds of things that we need to do to grow in those areas, whether it be to change our curriculum to better match the standards, to work with different teaching techniques to better communicate the mathematics, or to support struggling learners who need extra support in that area. So it's really, um, it's not across the board that we don't do well in math. Overall, it's looking that way, but there's quite variation from um, cohort to cohort and year, grade level to grade level. Robin? Does that answer your question? Or not really? I just <coughs> I just note some really exemplary you know testing in English and and it's, to my mind science and math track closely and we do better in science I just wonder if we need to focus more on math or are we doing well in especially well in English because it's spoken here and nothing else from the day we we're born or what I th do you want to speak to that? I just want to address the fact that the, the types of questions l are very different. The style of the question, what, ki what kids are being asked to do, looks really different. So part of the work in the early days of MCAS, we're seeing the types of questions. And it's not that we're teaching to the test, we're teaching to the standards. Um, but kids are being asked to show that in various ways. And so now with the new MCAS 2.0, they're asked to show it in different ways than they may have before. So there's a little bit of an adjustment and we can look at how kids can have a little bit more familiarity with those types of questions to match what they're being asked. Content may, may be the same in some cases, but the questioning may look really different. Can I speak to this at all? I, I'm just, um, I'm going to speak to this with my, my educator hat. You know, I, I support a lot of students in mathematics and my experience is that um, m more students tend to enter the system at every level who are um, lacking in math readiness than who are lacking in language readiness. Um, and I think that that's systemic broader than even the school system. I think that's societally system systemic, but it, it shows in the test scores consistently. And even when you look at the state scores, comparing the state scores in English and the state scores in math, you see the same discrepancy. So I'm not saying, you know, it's not a challenge for the schools to address, and I applaud the work that's being done, but I know on my end it's certainly, um, it's not, it's not unusual. Sharon? Um, I know a few of you are new in the district, but d do you have any feel for the comparison from this year to last year? And I know it's a new, it's the 2.0, but do you think they did better last year than they did this year? It's not even really possible to compare. For the past two years, the state has not released state average results, so you really have no comparison or sense of where you stood in relationship to anything. So, so you don't have one of these from last year or something no. similar? No. For the past two years, because the kids in the state were taking a variety of different tests, some were taking PARC, some were taking gotcha. MCAS, some were taking paper-based, some were taking computer-based, the state did not release any statewide data. So it was really impossible to tell. And this is a new test, so it's not fair to compare the new test to the old tests. Um, when I've been in conference calls with the state to sort of introduce and explain new results, they have, they have charts that show that like for the, you know, I'm just gonna pick a grade level randomly, say for fourth grade across the state, in the old MCAS, 
you know, 65% of the kids may have been proficient or advanced. In the new MCAS across the state, only 45%. I'm just making up those numbers. But this, this new test is substantially different, and they have substantially different scaling than the old MCAS. So it's really not possible to compare backwards. We just have to sort of take this as year one and start looking at our growth moving forward. So as a group, do you feel um, that this MCAS 2.0 is a better tool? To do what? <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded that question. <laughs> Maybe it's a different tool? Hotel. It's a different level of challenge they're expecting. Yes, I would say that um, we sent home a letter, actually, that the state wrote um, along with the MCAS results. The state um, said quite clearly that while last year um, the children were meeting expectations, this year they, we'd raised the rigor so they would no longer be meeting the expectation. And um, it's tough because we are we are chasing um, a lifting level of sophistication and abstraction. I am watching in my school. I will say that the teachers teach every day um, with full energy and just excellence, and that the children are engaged in learning, and I am amazed at how well they do and what they can do. Um, and yet, I I do I'm a bit of, I'm on a bit of a hobby horse. I do have concern for the level of pressure that children are increasingly under, the amount of anxiety that teachers and children um, are facing as a result of these constantly changing tests and this. Um, you know, it, it sounds so good, we're lifting the rigor. Um, and I think we are, and in many ways, ways it's, it can be a good thing. But um, I, for one, will just, I will stand up and say I am extremely proud of the work that I can talk about Warwick, is done at Warwick by the teachers and the students. And I think they're phenomenal teachers and learners. And I would, I would venture to say that it's the same in the other elementary schools. It's all business. Thank you. I like hearing that. Is there any, any more questions of our administrators? Yes. I just think that's a sad statement for our education system. Any other questions? Sue. I don't have a question about MCAS, but I read all the wonderful newsletters. Can I say something? Why not? Those? I like <laughs> that kind of stuff. I just wanted to say I loved the whole art check-in that the art teacher did on, for all grade levels. I thought that was just wonderful to read as a person who doesn't get into the schools on a, on a daily basis, because I'm in a different school. Um, I loved that Officer Cummings had been to Northfield, and I wonder if there's a plan for Officer Cummings to get to the other schools, so you could tell me about that. And I thought the technology links in the Pearl Roads newsletter were really neat. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 those were great little news. It gave me a great um, window. And I love the new um, PVRS newsletter. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really readable and beautiful. Yeah. All right. Um, do you want to tell us what's happening in your schools? Well, or? I, I was just going to respond um, sure. in terms of the Officer Cummings piece. Um, I'm not sure if it's because I'm close to Pioneer. Um, but he has visited um, a couple times and we are scheduling another time to meet and start thinking about how he can best serve the elementary school. Um, we've talked, or I've talked with him about wanting to address the social media um, and the potential bullying that comes along with that in, in our elementary school that we're seeing and hearing about. 
um, and it's being addressed through the technology department in terms of um, the digital citizenship work. However, um, I think having another perspective on that and looking at some of the legalities of that and consequences and also right from wrong from just another perspective I think would be helpful. So he and I are um, talking about that and looking at ways that we can, um, he can support the school, particularly the fifth and sixth graders. So it, he's ready and raring to go. And he's also been supporting in other ways um, behind the scenes with student issues and such that have been, it's been very helpful to have him. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, can, before you, okay, go ahead, Bob. Um, I just wanted to extend an invitation uh, for next Wednesday, the turkey trot. Uh, we've got uh, Pearl Roads, uh, Warwick, and Bernardston doing a 1.1 mile uh, race next uh, Wednesday morning, uh, kicking off at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Sue Scott, our PE teacher, does a fantastic job in, in organizing the event. And uh, I think BNCTV is going to be there and okay. uh, uh, the recorder, and uh, it's going to be a great event. It always is. <laughs> um, before you leave, can you tell us what the what's happening around the holidays? And I know today was the senior meal at Pioneer, but maybe if there's fundraisers going on at your school or if there's holiday concerts or, hate to put you guys on the spot, but that's the only time we hear about these things. I, we have our um, Thanksgiving food drive next Tuesday, this coming Tuesday okay. for the food pantry. So that's what we're All doing. Right. And there's a fundraiser tomorrow up here. PTO is doing all kinds of... I saw it out here. Um, they they're do. doing like oh, a food oh, drive yes. type or Yes, food they do a lot. Sale. It's hard to keep track. Yeah, they yeah. do a produce sale every uh, a few times a year, mm -hmm. which is a great fundraiser. Um, and all are invited. So there'll be lots of food From two at to a very, very good price. Um, I think it's two to six. That's what I, I think actually I know because I got the letter from the PTO in my packet. <laughs> <laughs> but it, the PTO is doing a fundraiser two to six. It's the produce sale. And I believe there will also have wreaths from... Um, five Acre, and then they're doing a craft, a ho holiday craft thing on December 2nd. Cool. That's nice to hear. And do you know about the holiday concert? Do you have that? I don't have the date in my head, but... Okay. Um, Maybe. Does anybody know what their holiday concert is? December 12th um, is the primary concert um, at Berniston. That's uh, at uh, 2 or 2.15. That's a Tuesday. The, the following uh, Monday, the 18th or 19th. Um, the Uppers concert is at uh, uh, 6.30, and at uh, Pearl Roads, uh, the concert, I believe, is uh, Wednesday, December 6th, over at uh, the town hall, and I believe that's at uh, 6 o'clock. Is that right, Lisa? No. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Warwick's um, holiday concert is on the 12th at 6.30. Right. You, uh, and Pioneer has our fall play production, Alice in Wonderland, coming up, and then we have our holiday band and chorus concert coming up. Do and you know I, what that? I don't know the dates of either offhand. Okay. okay. The band chorus one is December seventh in the gym. Seventh okay. in the gym. Yeah. Right. And right. then prior to that, we have um, a fundraiser tomorrow night for the chorus trip to um, Washington D.C. They're doing a telethon with some talent available in the mm -hmm. auditorium, and then they have their fall sort of talent show um, fundraiser next Tuesday, their official one. But tomorrow is really a telethon, so you might be getting calls from Pioneer students. <laughs> and I know because I've been hit up by a special band member, there is a citrus, um, citrus, sale citrus and there. fudge There's like sale. Five or six going on. fundraisers, things being sold at the moment. So if you want, if you want pop, if you want fudge or, um, fruit. or citrus, citrus. Yeah, or fruit, call a band member. Yeah, Jeannie. Is there any way that these dates can be put on the Google Calendar that we can all access through D Google Drive? Um, ours are all on our calendar on the front page of our website. Okay, but if they were all on one calendar. The district calendar? A district yeah, calendar. A district calendar. calendar that they they can have different color codes for different schools. That would, because that would be one place to go to to see all of them. It would make my life easier. 
All right. Is there anything else we need to put these people through the hot seat for? Or? Sharon. Sharon. Is there a turkey dinner at uh, Pioneer this year? Yeah. It's it was today. It's today. Yeah. Yeah. You missed it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get it there. next Thursday. <laughs> and Oh, I just want to add one other thing about the turkey dinner. Not only was the food excellent and the chorus and the band, but every year I am so impressed with the students who are waiting on tables. Dana McRae being one of them. It, they're so polite and so attentive and as soon as you walk up to the door, I mean you feel like you're a very special person because they open the door for you and help you when you know you come inside and anyway it's a wonderful wonderful event so and I and in, in Warwick the students were the same way at the spaghetti dinner those are the two that I've been to yeah. students around you asking to help that's really really a special thing we've got some special kids in our midst yes, sure do. okay thank you thank very you. very very much um, Gina do you want to come up and tell us what's happening with athletics? Absolutely. All right. I know I'm in shorts. I'm just not ready to put the shorts away yet. <laughs> oh, boy. You're warmer says. than we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so not a whole lot has happened since I saw you last month. Um, other than uh, last night, we had a fantastic evening of celebrating our fall sports. So we had our awards night last night, and um, we got to display our boys soccer league champion banner, and uh, they took it to their, um, what we do is we all meet together, and we do our uh, scholar athletes first, and then we split off into rooms for each team so that they can do their team awards. And so the boys got to take the banner into their room and uh, they were very careful. They didn't let it touch the ground and um, they marched it right in there and, and uh, enjoyed that. Um, we also uh, announced uh, different all-stars. So we had um, a golf all-star, Kyle Maynard was named uh, an all-star. And in soccer, we had four boys and four girls. So we had Ryan Underwood, Jack Lau, Dana McRae, Jordan Lofman. And girls, we had Emily Raymond, Kaylee Gibson, Jordan Hubbard, and uh, Aiden Grease. So that was very exciting. And football hasn't met yet, so um, I'm assuming we'll have some football all-stars that will come down. Um, Dana McRae was also uh, nominated as an all-star at the, at the all-state level. And at that level, there's only four. And so that's quite an honor uh, for Dana and for our school. And our coach, Don Frazier, was nominated as Coach of the Year. So that was really, really cool um, to have that. Um, and that program, literally in two years, has just been just amazing. And um, uh, you know, last night was just a lot of fun to be able to celebrate some just amazing seasons that we had this fall between our girls and boys soccer. And um, it really was. It was a lot of fun. And um, give them a pat on the back. Uh, beyond that, we have uh, our team night is next Tuesday. We have a guest speaker coming, a motivational speaker. Um, we're going to be doing that in the gym. And our booster club is going to be uh, having, hoping to have parents sign up and get involved more. Uh, we're also going to be collecting, the indoor track team is collecting uh, warm clothes for the Franklin County Recovery Center. So we'll start that on Tuesday night. Uh, and then that'll continue for a couple weeks. Um, and then um, we had um, our community lost a, a father to a, a car accident. Um, and uh, the daughter uh, graduated last year. And their son uh, is now a student at Brattleboro. But um, that loss was felt by several of our students who uh, remember very fondly the Vergobi family. So two of the teams, the girls' teams that uh, Alexis was on the softball team and the basketball team. They're um, putting together, uh, they're going to collect donations to help the family around the holidays. So they'll be collecting uh, team night. They've also asked if they could collect at the bonfire so that, uh, and the football parents um, have said absolutely, we'll do that. So that um, I'm proud of the girls for stepping up and, you know, and, and showing their support 
for, for their uh, friends who lost their dad. Uh, the bonfire is next Wednesday night, the 22nd, and it's from 6 to 9, and it's going to be at the Northfield Golf Course this year. It used to be over in Berniston, so um, it's going to be at the Northfield Golf Course, and they are, um, it's free of charge. Uh, I think Berniston Kiwanis is still doing the food, and they're going to have music, and um, everyone is welcome to join them to uh, support the football team um, and just have a really good time at that event, and it's always a lot of fun for them. Uh, the football game is, uh, yep. Northfield. Yes. No. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then uh, the football game is Thursday at 10 a.m. So put your turkey in and and uh, everything, get everything ready, and then come over to the game and um, have dinner at at my house. It'll be two or three o'clock when I get there. <laughs> Hopefully, nothing will be burnt. Um, so, uh, and the Turkey Day game is always a lot of fun. We always a lot of alumni come, and, and it's um, a really great time to, to see some of your, the former students, and um, just a really good time. Uh, and then our winter sports kick in on the 27th, and um, Booster Clubs, they have some things that they're trying to do, some new events. Uh, they think they want to tape me to a wall. Um, <laughs> haven't agreed yet, so we'll work on that. I probably will pa wear pants for that if I do it. Um, but so, you know, I'm really excited about the Boost Club. They've done really, really well, and they've been great about communicating with me and right there asking what we need and, and been very helpful. So we're off to a good start. Just congratulations to all the teams for a great season this fall. Thank you. It was really fun to, to be a part of what they allowed me to be a part of. And I said that to my cross-country team. Some of the, um, the a parent was there. And uh, I, you know, I just thank the parents for uh, giving me that opportunity. And it really is. And those coaches so appreciate the opportunity that they're given to work with these kids. And they really do appreciate the kids. And you can totally see it every day at practice and at games. And it's really cool to see. JD? You need to use the microphone and make sure it's turned on. <laughs> it does. Isn't that great news? It was wishful thinking. <laughs> Gina, um, next Tuesday you said they're collecting warm clothing yeah, so for the recovery project? Yeah, the Franklin County Recovery Center. Center in Greenfield. Yeah. What kind, uh, kind of clothes? They're looking for outer clothing, you know, Sweatshirts, um, so pants. I, I can address that. Yep, go ahead. Mr. Bell is the, so the head coach. At Lunt, um, there's the Northern Hope Recovery Center, which is a 32 bed yeah. downstairs. Um, definitely warm clothes for when they leave, and particularly men's clothes, but also lounging around because they lounge around all day. Yeah. And so. Um, t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, um, comfortable pants, socks, anything Fleeces, would, would be appreciated. Outer clothes, like mm -hmm. coats, jackets, hats? That too. All right. Because some of them just leave and some of them leave against medical advice, but we want to send them out warm. Women and men's clothes or basically men's clothes? Mostly men, but we will accept women's clothes too. Okay. Yeah. We seem to have a lot of those um, women's clothes, but men's not as many. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. This, this is no surprise to Gina because I know my husband shared it with her. Um, their JV field hockey team my husband transported to games several times and he said those seventh graders were real scrappers <laughs> so at coming up they're going to have a really great team <laughs> scrappers that's good for for uh, that team great <laughs> okay um is there anyone from the heart committee that wants to fill us in on what's going on <laughs> All right, we have Sue and Bill that are both sitting at the table. Don't jump first. I, th I thought Tony was going to be here. <laughs> I was not at the last meeting because I was watching Dana play against Lennox. 
It was a heartbreaker. Really good excuse. They shut them out through the whole game, 0-0, zero, zero, and lost in overtime by one point. Oh, it was that's, amazing. That's, but it was a good game. It was. Lennox ran circles around them the whole time, but they could not they score. Good enough. I like that. Bill, you were there. Yeah. So at the uh, last heart meeting, there was um, – oh, uh, we were – Getting ready to submit uh, or you know put final touches on the RFP for the grant that we got, but um, I guess most people there decided that it would not be wise to go to keep going ahead with that right now with the regarding what's going on with uh, Gil Montague and Tech, and not to stop but to to kind of take a step and consider. Um, you know, we don't want to duplicate efforts if, if, you know, we didn't know what was going on for the grant or the heart committee didn't know what was going on for the grant uh, that they just applied for today. And so we didn't want to duplicate efforts. So we're going to kind of wait and see a, a little bit. Uh, they didn't, nobody really wanted to stop moving ahead with our own grant. Uh, but I uh, thought it was best to just wait and see so we don't duplicate efforts. And that was most of the last meeting. And, and we will be going to the meeting next Tuesday in Gil Montague as a heart committee, whoever can go, um, just to have a conversation with them. Great. And we meet again Monday also. Wow, Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. Wow. What else are you doing the rest of the week? <laughs> Sharon? Yeah, I spoke with uh, Michelle uh, Gruso, who is the chair of the committee, and she said she's working along with Mike Sullivan so that they don't overlap and... So I guess that would be the Tuesday. Yeah. I spoke to Michelle and she's told me exactly the same thing. So I guess she's trying to cover all the bases. Consistent voice. Exactly. <laughs> she is a consistent voice. Not a bad thing. Um, Ruth has said that we need to, the Heart Committee has asked if they can be on our agenda monthly. Um, and Ruth thought that we needed to vote to add them to our agenda. Is that something? that someone would care to make a motion to do? I'll make a motion for that. Okay. All right. And a second? All right. All those in favor? Wait, can we ask a question? Sure you can. Would this just be an, a, like it is on the agenda tonight and another addition under appearances? I would think so. Okay. I, I haven't heard otherwise. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? All right. Looks unanimous. Thank you, guys. Um, old business. We have discussion on a business manager. Did everyone look at their at their um, board notes that Ruth had sent out? So you know where we are financially on um, as far as extra money goes, or not extra money goes. Yeah lack of extra money so um, we were asked when the audit was held that we think seriously about a business manager so that's where we've been going from um, Sharon had called the Mahar school um, superintendent and had, or, and had talked to Dan Hayes or left a message for him um, and hasn't heard back from him I have not explored um, talking to the financial company that reached out to us saying that they were going to be an exorbitant amount of money. I'm sure it was a typo, but somehow $5,000 a week just does not sound right to me. And I think they must have made a mistake. And I will do that. Um, I will check that out. But in the meantime, um, where does everybody want to go? What do you want? What's the next steps? Don't everybody. Oh, David, did you have your hand raised? Oh, I didn't even see you. Thank you. Go for it. It's because you can't see sideways. <laughs> um, Ruth's note that we have no funds uh, goes on to explain we're having a cash flow problem. Mm -hmm. I want to point out those are two entirely different things. You can have a cash flow problem worse than ever and be making money hand over fist. And, and so growth, 
shrinkage, all kinds of stuff. Uh, definitely income rel losses, operating losses hurt cash flow, but they are fundamentally two different things. I, we learned last Tuesday that since we didn't vote a line item budget, the superintendent is in charge. I say, find some money for this. It's that important. We need to do it. We need to be able to round, uh, and the cash flow problems alone have me so concerned about our ability to survive into the next year because of that loan that's outstanding. Exactly. We've got a budget to develop. We should not be in a situation again where whoever is our superintendent ha was not involved in our budget in that in next year. I think we have to find this money, as painful as it's going to be. It is going to be painful, but I think I agree with you. Sharon? Can David make a motion to that, that we find a business manager and find the money to, to do that? Well, how about we talk about that conceptually before I throw something out for a yeah. number? Um, I've been in discussions with Bay State Municipal Accounting Group, okay. um, not uh, who in an interview uh, told me they have one business manager on their staff. They're a consulting firm out of Maynard who are made up of former municipal employees and they, they serve as consultants. There would just be one possibility. We've got the Mahar business manager possibility. Dan Haynes, we have, uh, I, I think, other indications of, of interest. But I just think in terms of everything going on, this has got to be a really high priority. Or we're going to be, we run the risk of be, being rudderless. So if that's the case, I would say because of Dan's background and understanding of the district and being the auditor that in his, I mean, he's very capable and he still does some auditing on the side that he might be able to um, not have the agreement that you would want for the next year, but he probably could come up with a solution and he knows we don't have much money that we might be able to fit the, uh, what you need. All right, now are you talking about trying to contract with him as an individual or uh, as a Mahar employee? Um, I think we, I wouldn't, unlike some superintendents, but I would go to, I'd talk to Dan if it's, and then Terry would have to be in the loop, absolutely. Ter Terry and Dan have both yeah. written to me and they're perfectly willing to share right. him. <coughs> so I think that that's not a problem. Well. Uh, it can be a problem depending on what his current job is defined. So for he, instance, yeah. if I were full time yeah. in the town of Warwick forty hours and not thirty, I could not work outside. Mm -hmm. I think he only works part time. All right. Sharon? Yeah. Those are all a lot of the questions I was gonna ask Dan. Uh, where would he sit? What would his abilities be? What were his thoughts as far as how many hours does he think he would have to give? What would he want to be compensated for and then what we could pay him <laughs> I mean we'd have to know first what his availability would be mm -hmm. and if he was contra contracted with Mahar so he couldn't be independent with us if we had to go through Mahar but those are all the questions that need to be asked yeah, so so there's three possible ways he could come to us one would be through an intergovernment agreement with Mahar and that would be um, negotiated he could come to us as an employee, and there's no laws except our personnel policy about and fair labor practices, et cetera. So we wouldn't have to go through a process to hire an individual as an employee. But if they are a consultant, we do have to. Over 50,000, we have to bid it. Between 10 and 50,000, we have to develop the scope of services and seek written quotes. Um, so th there's three ways we can come at it. And that conversation we have with Dan is what's going to be the most vital, and then we can proceed from yeah. there. So I would throw out a number that a business manage, manager uh, budget full time is probably one hundred and ten thousand dollars. That's probably low, but the rest of this year? for a year, an annualized figure, oh. and we want a half time person. Mm -hmm. So cut 
cut the let's call it 120. We get 60,000, and, and half the year's burned, so, so we need 30. 30 40. But I'm probably low. That was my thought too. David. So how, how, how would folks feel about a motion of uh, finding forty thousand dollars for a half-time business manager for the reasonable. rest of yeah. the year? How That's my motion. How do people feel? Discussion. Yes, was that a motion? Did that was my motion. motion. I will second your motion. Okay. <laughs> so we had discussion. How do people feel about that? I, th I think it's essential. I do too, but we have some people that are pondering, I see. Okay. Sue? I just have to say, um, I know we've brought this up in other situations, but we haven't heard, a, I haven't heard the full discussion. But Ruth, we did hire you to do both of these jobs. And now we're still paying you, but we're hiring someone to do a job that we hired you to do. And I just think we need to talk about that. So I'm just, I mean, I know that, you know, it was all of our understanding that you were our business manager and our superintendent. Mm -hmm. And that was how you represented yourself when you approached the towns. And now we're saying we need to pay someone else to do that job. And I'm just wondering if you've given any consideration to sharing some of what we already pay you for us to have that resource to pay someone else. I think that would be a fair request only if there were a reduction in hours and I don't think we need a reduction in our superintendent's hours with the problems we face so I don't think it's a reasonable request for that reason I understand where you're coming from but I I just think it's doesn't serve our needs we, we do not need uh, for our superintendent and a hired business manager to share a single job we've got a job here that we're f challenged to meet can I just answer the question before anybody? So I, I'm under contract with you, and um, you know I base my life um, around the contract that I have. So I'm not in a financial position at this time, given the fact that um, I have resigned my position at the end of the of the year, and so there <coughs> will be costs associated with uh, me trying to find another position. So I'm financially not in a position to. Um, cut my salary and um, I'm feeling like um, yeah doing the two business um, is really um, hard but it's only difficult because of what a mess the books were in it wasn't it's not like it was all kind of smooth and we had things going the way they were supposed to be going I for the first two years started under uncovering things that were not going well and were not going appropriately so um, I really do believe that I can get you to where you need to be at the end of the year financially better than you were before, which I've demonstrated in my first and second years of running the books. Do I think that it makes more sense for you to have a business manager? Absolutely, because doing the, the two jobs is very um, time consuming. But at this point, um, no, I would not consider reducing my salary for those reasons. Sharon and Sharon and then Robin. Um, in regards to when you were first when you first came into the district, I think you had a little bit of an inkling, perhaps not to the degree that you learned later, that there was some budget problems. But no, I um, okay, go ahead. And I think you know s some of that may contribute to the difficulties. Um, that were faced here. Some of it may be just um, the nature of the beast in the state of Massachusetts. Um, some of it may be, which is um, less students. I mean, there's a lot of variables here um, as to why this budget is what it is. At the same time, this district also has a budget. And it's, I mean, we're faced with the same types of things that you are if you were to get paid less. 
we're getting we're not getting as much money either because we have decreased in the students and as far as the hours are concerned I think there probably are some reduced hours um, you'd have to argue how much I don't know how much time do you think you spent on the budget over the past couple of years a lot of time and now you're not having to do that anymore we having somebody else do it to me there is kind of a a variable of reduced hours in your job so I, I would support um, you taking a good look at what you could do if you would take a reduction in salary I'm just recalling the conversations that we had around hiring a, an individual who held both certifications of superintendent and business manager. If I remember a chart that I looked at probably a year or two ago, we as a district pay our superintendent, I think the second lowest superintendent salary in Western Massachusetts, and we benefited from asking her to have two certifications because one of the considerations we had when hiring a superintendent in the first place was that had we not hired someone with a dual certification, we would have had to hire two people originally. So we have been banking, we have been basically getting a discount for the last two years. Is there, is there any more discussion? Uh, before we uh, move the motion, should instead of putting all our eggs in one basket if Dan says no or somebody else says no shouldn't we advertise as well my motion was for forty thousand dollars had nothing yeah. to do with Dan yeah. I think you're right Bill we don't want to tie it to one person all right so the motion would and you Peg read oh Peg I'm just concerned as where we're going to find this money. Ruth is saying it isn't to be found. If it means we're going to be cutting more teaching staff, I have grave reservations about this. Um, and and as far as Ruth not being able to work as a part-time superintendent. Isn't that what the majority of us are looking at is sharing a superintendent? So we're not going to have a full-time superintendent. Um, the select boards are saying ideally this would start next year. I personally don't see that happening starting next year. But, I mean, we have to start being, we can't say one thing and then... <laughs> We may have less than half of a superintendent if we're sharing. I, we, I don't how that's going to be divided, and uh, there's a lot to be figured out. But. Yeah, Sharon. Oops. Sharon, and then I'll look this way. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, as far <laughs> as uh, I would never be in favor of, of uh, reducing the staff any further than it's reduced. That would hurt the students, I think. Um, what I would be in favor of is taking another look at where some of those figures might be in regards to perhaps the, the position I referred to before, Dr. Pote. Um, if there's any other monies in there, how much do we have within that budget that could go toward that position? Um, you know, we might be surprised to find enough money in there. I agree with David to start with the $40,000 in search of a business manager. And what I perceive for Ruth is that she will still be um, corroborating with the new business manager. And so that, that she, even though she won't effectively be the business manager, she will be working very closely with someone. And um, Peggy, I don't know where you got the idea that doing this money would mean a reduction in staff because all of us feel that 
that we wouldn't want to do anyway, and it hadn't been brought up about that. We said to find the money. So you had your hand up? No. No? Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, we've never resolved the $282,000 shortfall between the actual revenue and our budget. And we're still waiting to see exactly how that's going to happen or where it's happening before we get to the end of the year. I mean, without the information, the comprehensive budget sheet in front of us, we so now we're going to make that a bigger deficit. Excuse me. Do you have a recommendation, Dr. Miller? Occasionally, I'm a doctor. <laughs> Only on occasion when I hang out with David. Um, uh, I'm, that's exactly what I've been thinking, is what, what Peggy's saying. Um, so my salary is, what, 137, 139, 137, or 139,000, right? Well, that most... 141. 141 now, okay. So that salary is really covering two positions. And so in other districts, the superintendent alone is making that money. And their business managers are probably making 80, 90,000, maybe 100,000 in that range. And so even if you go out to share, when I leave, you're gonna share my position. You're not gonna have a ton of money to be able to, to support those two part-time positions. The reason that I'm not in favor of getting the uh, business manager at this time is because we already know that we came into this year with a shortfall. So any money that we're trying, like I already froze the budget like I did in the first year I got here when I realized something wasn't looking right. And I was hoping that we might, just might, have some money left over in this year's budget if we're really, really frugal to pay off some of that deficit. But if you, if you do this, if you, you know, get another business manager now, that's just taking more money. That money, that $40,000 or $50,000, could be going um, to pay off the shortfall. I know it's really uncomfortable. It's been lousy the last couple years. But hopefully, with what we've been doing, we're going to get closer to being you know, not upside down, maybe breaking even or a little bit in the hole. The towns have graciously said that they would, um, once we get a firm number and we understand the food lunch program, that they're going to try to pay that off for us. And in years, prior years, I said no, because we hadn't come up with a plan to not keep going in the hole. Now that we did, the, the select men have said, we'll pay off that 200 and something thousand dollar debt. I think it's the least that we can do as a committee is to, for the rest of this year, try to get whatever that shortfall is down as much as possible. And I, you know, if you want different reports or whatever, I'm sure, you know, Dan or somebody will come in and, and cause he, he'll come talk to us anyhow. He'll work with me and others. Now, as a just because that's who Dan is so that's my position it's not necessarily that I won't give up my job but it, even if I did that it's not going to get you where you need to be it's biting the bullet for the rest of the year Sharon. I I still I'm thinking that we were advised by um, the auditors to get a business manager and we were also advised during the leadership evening we had to get a business manager. Mm -hmm. And I think to drag our feet when we've had two reputable, or more, more than two reputable sources telling us to get a business manager, I think we need to get a business manager for the rest of this year. As well as all the select boards. The letter from the select boards. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, right. sure. All right, if there's no more discussion, we have a motion. Yeah, go ahead. P 
Peggy brought up the $293,000 deficit, and that was because of um, the lack of reimbursement for transportation, I believe. I thought we had resolved that deficit. We did. It's, uh -huh. No, it's, we're talking about the deficit from last, from last year. The lunch deficit? The lunch? No, we're talking about the deficit at the end of last fiscal year. We were, we were overspent. You have a question mark on your forehead. Yeah, um, I'll just have to wait and listen. Okay. So there is a motion, a second on the floor. Does everybody remember what David's motion was? $40,000. Okay, $40,000 for a business manager, part-time. Yes, Martha. I'm really late to the game here, I apologize, but <clears throat> I, I want to know what the scenario is if we do not hire a business manager right now. What would be the solution for straightening things, I mean, out? Well, I think we started on the game by having Stacy come in for the month to get our, to get our books um, brought up to, not to date, but up to this fiscal year. Fiscal year or school year? It was a couple of years ago. Okay. It's been, the, it's been reconciling the bank space. Until what point? Until this point, and then st um, our treasurer will take over. Okay. Till, till this day or the end of the fiscal year or this end no, of no, the... No, no, no. It's when right now. She, okay. she did the back reconciliation. Okay. So that has been done. Um, and so we've started that... that journey or that whatever process. you want to call it. Okay. Um, we still have a budget to make out. We have negotiations, so we need to get leadership for for helping us through the negotiation figures that we can do. Um, help me, people. What else are we toying with? There's a lot of financial stuff out there. Sharon? <laughs> I I'm really would like to, to feel more clear about <clears throat> exactly how far back have the books not been kept up and where are we to this point? Which year are we <laughs> caught up to? Last caught year? Up. Do we have no. another year to catch up? What? No, 2017. We're, we're in the right fiscal year. So Stacy's got all the books reconciled? And well, she got all the bank statements. She's doing yeah. the treasurer part. So she got all the bank statements reconciled. All right, up that's a big piece because without them reconciled, you don't know how much money. That's you right, have. exactly. So that's so we're not quite there yet because we have some more bank statements that have to be done. That's a lot of still a lot of work yet to be done with everything else that um, we've kind of stumbled to this point, and I, I feel as though we may keep stumbling to the end of the year, and I don't think we can afford to do that. Can I make one comment? I just want to make one comment. We're talking about the treasurer's department, and they're in the bank statements and where the, the actual revenues are. A business manager really has to keep themselves very separate from the treasurer department. You don't want those to intertwine. So you get another business manager, they're not going to be you know, really mucking around in the treasurer department because you need to keep those um, those two sides very separate. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear. It's not like you're going to get a business manager and they're going to go to the treasurer um, part and start um, fixing it because that that's not be done. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's what I was getting. Okay. These two different factions were getting combined, and I wasn't sure they were supposed to be. So, Ruth, can you tell me again, how do you feel things would be if we do not spend $40,000 on a business manager? I think you'll be fine. I think that the auditors and the panel were saying that splitting my position makes sense, especially since I'm leaving, and that having one doesn't make sense. 
but I don't think they were saying go out and spend money and get a business manager. They're saying bigger picture, looking at down the road, we had to clean the books up and we should have a superintendent and a business manager. I think that's what both of those parties were saying. They okay. weren't saying when to do it. They said down the road you need to do it. Okay. I, I felt like I was being, uh, I felt like it was happening much faster than I expected it to be happening, and I just wanted an explanation. Okay. I, I understand now thought. from both points of view. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, based on somebody who works at the tech school, I was told that um, it makes more sense to split the two roles. So it, a school runs more effectively when those roles are split. And I think going forward after Janu uh, June 30th of 2018 is when we split those roles. I think it's a future thing. That's my take on it. I just wanted to add that I, I'm, I'm totally in, in support of ha hiring. I just don't know where the money's coming from. And I think I'd feel more comfortable if we actually have a wait till we talk to Dan Haynes and find out if that's a realistic amount of money. Maybe we won't need that much. Maybe he could come in and lend a hand um, to get us through. <laughs> Didn't your motion say up to? That's what I thought. And it did not name anybody. Right. Yeah. Can I continue? Yes. We have a $14 million budget. $40,000 is about one quarter of 1% of the budget. I used to do small business consulting. And I'd see businesses, especially retail businesses, struggling. And they would be failing in part because they wouldn't invest in marketing and advertising and they needed to spend 20 percent of it and if they tried to cut that back the business goes in a death spiral i think that a business manager with fresh eyes can more than pay for themselves in the remainder of this year all right are we ready to vote who Oh, Kathy, I didn't see your hand. Excuse me. Well, I'm struggling to ask the question, and I guess I would just ask you, as someone who is living on a job site every day, um, the efficacy of making a decision on an amount without conversation about posting this position, whether it's advertised in the recorder, whether it's advertised on school spring with a very short turnaround time. And if you have someone in mind, if I hear a name getting bounced around a lot, you call that person up and you say, it's gonna be on school spring on Monday. But I question the process and the protocol of bringing a position in like this without a proper posting. And maybe that's coming. Bill, did you have something no. to say? Okay. David? All we're doing here is voting on $40,000 for this purpose, for this term. Nothing else is decided. And it, uh, it did occur to me that it's unfortunate that we have to, in public, get this number out there. So perhaps what we want to do is, is, having had this conversation, just vote that we want to pursue this and see what the n number turns out that we need because we all know that if a number is floated out there, an awful lot of responses are gonna hit it on the head. Yeah. I'll, I'll withdraw my motion if the second would be willing. That's fine. All right, so my motion is withdrawn. The second has agreed. Uh, I, I move we pursue a half-time business manager for the rest of this year. Okay. Sure, I'll second that. <laughs> All right, so, so I, Robin. I said I would second. Robin seconded. Revised motion, no. or new motion. Okay, is there any new discussion 
We've already rehashed. I don't know if we need to rehash more. All right. All those in favor of David's motion? Okay, seven opposed. And four opposed. So the motion carries. <laughs> Poor Gail. So. <laughs> Do you need the names? Yes, people. Opposed. Oh, the opposed. Down for Pam. Opposed. opposed. Deb and Peggy in the corner. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, she, just, yeah, there's more of us on this I side, so they're hard to see. Yeah, moving on down the agenda. Um, a review and follow up on the training we had um, a few nights ago. Does anybody have any words of wisdom, um, what they may have come away with, what they wished had been covered that wasn't, what was covered that they liked? Yes. Well, I was reminded of some things that I'd forgotten. I think we <laughs> all had that. I learned some things, and I thought it was a valuable time spent, and I'm glad it happened. Yeah. Me too. So, I would love to have um, and maybe MASC come back and do a budget workshop with us mm -hmm. on understanding um, regional school district budgeting, because I, f you know, she, I felt this woman saying to me, "Look, you own the budget and you're responsible." And at the same time, I was hearing, "And you can do nothing with this budget. The superintendent has total control over this budget." And so I feel really confused at this point. I would just like more training so that I know my role. Um, I mean, I'm willing to work hard, but I don't want to be doing things that are inappropriate or, or wasting my time. So um, there was one other thing. Can I add it before I go on sure. to the next oh, thing? yeah. Okay. If you can remember it, yeah. I just wanted to say, um, I think I heard the Ethics Commission, was it David Galbraith? Was that his name? Mm -hmm. This shocked me Gal that... Yeah. that um, as a parent of a student, I might have a conflict of interest, David Giannotti. So I just wanted the committee to know that I did call the Ethics Commission to ask that question, um, and I haven't heard back yet. But I was unaware that that was a problem. When I got on to the school committee, I called right away because at the time I was on the school council, and that was clarified for me. So I just wanted people to know that. Thanks. Robin. So um, I just, um, the thing that strikes me having this conversation now is just to second what um, Deb and now I've heard Sue say that um, I think it would be very valuable for us to continue to work with outside sources to give ourselves training because I think it was um, a very helpful evening. All right, Deb. I think that's a good idea. David? I attended a collaborative meeting last night and was reminded that school committee members need to take this mandatory training, and that is being offered uh, in the next month. So and when I took it, um, Martha, an old salt on the committee, took it again and I think found it valuable. So I'll, I'll get that information out there. Are you saying everybody needs to take no, it? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying that, okay. that those who have repeated right. it have found that it was not right. a waste of time because exactly. there's just so much to know. I mean, the manual is this thick. The yeah. other thing, and this relates to our training the other night, because our uh, uh, the inadequacies, uh, perceived inadequacies of our policies were brought up again and again and again and pounded. And I learned last night at my collaborative meeting that that MA, the Mass Association of School Committees, has model policies, and they have a program um, which town of, uh, the Belchertown School District decided their policies were such a mess after a bunch of false starts at addressing them, they adopted these MASC policies, and MASC will curate them and customize them and maintain them for a fee. So as we look at um, 
other ways of, of doing our business. Uh, we have this policy deficiency, and it's a huge job. This might be a, a way forward with compliant policies that we could adopt and then um, alter to to customize. I think if we tried to customize them before we adopt them, we'd it'd be a long time out. I've, I felt a little taken aback at them thinking that we didn't have policies. We worked on policies last year until we decided that it, or Ruth told us that we really needed to work on our handbook, so we sort of changed direction and worked on our handbooks and worked on our policies collectively. Um, but we do have policies there. Some of them haven't been updated for a few years, but we have a whole book of policies. Some of them are outdated. Some of them need to be reviewed, but we have a policy book that we are using. Yeah, I saw your hand back there. I just want to ask David, uh, collaborative, can you explain more the collaborative meeting, collaborative between them? Oh, so Thank you. The, the collaborative that our district and about 30 something others in the region, school districts, school districts public school districts, um, it's a nonprofit. Uh, established with a legislative charter, and it is essentially a, a nonprofit offering spe mostly special needs services to districts. So, uh, providing, and, and they do a lot of things, but they uh, provide educational services, and especially special needs, um, to kids that districts might not be able to handle, but uh, don't need a residential out of district placement. Um, the collaborative runs an academy. The, ca uh, the collaborative runs all kinds of, of professional development. The, it has a $47 million budget. Uh, yeah, now it's called. Yeah, collaborative.org. That's all. People know it. That's, that's great. Can, can I just Is that the same um, organization that helps us also uh, collectively bid on fuel and so also they, they save us some money that way as well? I, I just wanted to clear one thing up. Um, what we did was we went to the MASC site um, and we looked at there's all different districts um, policy manuals up on the site. And we picked one of the districts at the moment. I can't remember which one we picked. It was a while ago. And we downloaded all of their policies. And so the job that we were trying to get through by doing it every couple weeks was to um, look at these policies. They're all written. All we have to do is a look at them in light of what we may or may not have. Many of the, these are new, and we don't have them or there we have old ones that we can either keep or we can modify and so that's the process and um, the my concern is and what it's always been is that we are open to a lot of liability because our program our policies are absolutely not aligned with um, mass government I mean that we're just not and so we, we really do need to keep going through um, the policies that we got from MASC, which are, you know, their standard policies. They don't need a lot, but we really do need to spend some time in getting those in good order because that's the laws that we follow. And um, there's, a, there's a tremendous amount that is out of date. Just to pile on, the reason policies mitigate risk 
and reduce liability is when something unfortunate happens and you're asked, why did you do this? Why was this done this way? If you're able to turn to considered adopted policies and say, it says here when, you, when this, we do this, that's kind of the best get out of jail card you can have. So I'm the type of person that flies by the seat of their pants a lot and say, so what to policies. But here, we need policies. <laughs> <laughs> you know we need to move David thinks yeah. so. <laughs> so with that said, I put my name down again for the policy committee. And I am volunteering in front of everyone that I will take the chair and be a, doing that if so elected to do it. Is there any other follow up? Jeannie? I believe we all received an email about the um, school committee training, um, and I believe it's December 2nd from 8.30 to 12.30 in Northampton. Thank you. I think you're right. Okay. Is, so there's no other discussion on our training? Moving on to the um, Regionalization Efficiency Grant. Um, do you want to update us on what happened? Um, well, we, um, there were two grants submitted before 5 o'clock tonight. One was a grant with um, Gil Montague and Franklin County Tech. We were all on that. And then um, the um, efficiency one was also submitted um, with documentation and by 5 o'clock. And so now you just have to wait and see if you get selected. Do you know how long it would be? I have no idea until they respond huh? no I don't know and it, it didn't say anywhere no I didn't see that either Yeah, the state okay. kind of takes their own time so we'll know when we know yep um, test scores that's been taken care yep. of already yep. um, establishment of norms I went online because I'm wondering what exactly does this mean and I found out it was um, how to conduct business how to respect each other, how to follow the golden rule, how to um, make a meeting work. Um, I'm not sure if we need to have somebody come in to help us <laughs> or if we can just have MASC come up and take, talk to us, if we can just decide amongst ourselves that we wanna do it and set up a subcommittee or an ad hoc committee that can help us through that um, I don't know what we want um, I saw Robin and then I saw Sharon and then I saw Deb now maybe it's just because I looked up that direction I'm not sure so my first thought would be that um, Ms. Gilfeather has kindly offered her services for free to help us with things like that and maybe she would be someone that we could ask for some I already advice. asked and she said she couldn't do it she was busy sorry so yes. my, my thing would be to ask the MK, M, Massachusetts Association of School Committee folks to come and help us do that. And I'm wondering if they have the similar thing that David was talking about for policies. I bet they have something in writing that we could follow and use for that type of thing. And it wouldn't be reinventing the wheel. We could yeah. start from there and just I have start tailoring it to what we I have a book at home that talks about policies, and I'll, I'll double check that. Deb? I was on the MASC's uh, website, and I have the Mike, Mike, please. Mike. Um, <laughs> I was on the, MS, the MASC's website, and I have uh, collaboration with the district governance program, a uh, role of chair, a guide for present and future school committee chairs. In here is um, Tewksbury's, so it's, uh, it's to be used as um, uh, a design. There's one from Tewksbury uh, Protocols. There's a, a Linfield School Protocols. Today I went on another website and I 
printed out several uh, Natick schools, committees, uh, collaborative norms, Cambridge. There's like four or five ones that I printed out. We can do them ourselves. It is basically pro-social values of responsibility, respect, fairness, caring, and helpfulness. How are we going to act as a board yeah. amongst I, each other? I got that same information from the same place, so I know so, where you're coming from. Um, I will volunteer my time to work on this and put this together based on what I've pulled up from other okay. schools. I see one volunteer and two volunteers. I'll be a volunteer on that committee. Jim, you want to volunteer? Oh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I thought you were volunteering. <laughs> I was going to give do you we, Do we really need <laughs> someone to come in to teach us how to behave? Probably not. <laughs> Good. No. Actually, I think it's uh, observable. The meeting was pretty good because at least there's some collegiality going on here. So that, the, we're we're in our second meeting, right? Well, we and it's been be decent. Right. Learn how to right. be more collegial, that's all. Robin? We can do that. Jim? I, I just wanted to say, uh, Jim, I... I was not suggesting that we need someone to teach us how to behave. Um, my experience of setting meeting norms is that it's a process by which a group decides and what are their values and are what's what are the most important expectations they have for each other. And it helps often to have a facilitator. That was really where I was going with that. Okay, great. But I would also be willing to work with Deb and Sharon on it. All right. Is there anybody else that would care to work on a committee on a subcommittee? Just a just a really ad hoc to just do this job and nothing else. Okay, we Deb and Jeannie. I mean Deb and Jeannie and Sharon and Robin. Okay. I'm not. I'm not volunteering. Oh, you're not volunteering. I'm not volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was just gonna grab you. <laughs> I was just going to say I have a publication at home from MASC. I don't know when or where I got it that refers specifically to a lot of the things that you mentioned, Pat, mm -hmm. about how, to, how conducting meetings, how people should act toward one another. As Jim says, a lot of it is common sense, but sometimes it's good to see it all. So there are, there is material. So a lot of material out there already. Okay. David? I wasn't raising my hand to volunteer, <laughs> but to speak, and I just want to say that I got a great deal of pleasure out of the last vote where we were not divided along our regular lines, and I found myself voting with folks I'm often voting against. <laughs> yeah, collaboratively. There was some pleasure in that. Deb? Also, there, sorry. Also, just to let you know, I pulled up, uh, we actually received this. Just to hold that to your mouth. <laughs> 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 well, see, I prefer it over there. <laughs> so, anyways, at our training, we received protocols and best practices for effective school committee meetings. It's all right here. All we have to do is crop it down and exactly. fit it to us. That's exactly. pretty much it. So, I'll leave it up. So we have four volunteers, which sounds like a good number. So you will meet with Ruth, and we will try to figure out what we want and then bring it back to the committee for a vote after that, if that sounds right. Um, no, I think that, that process sounds great, but when we bring them back, you need to have a process of actually looking at them, thinking about them, and then when you finally totally embrace them and they're going to be yours, when things in the meeting start going kind of negative or not positive, let's put it that way, then you as, as board members, it's your responsibility to look at the norm and remind some people <laughs> that they need to um, pay attention to this norm. And that's really what they're for. It's not like we're going to get them, here they are, let's put them on the desk and forget about it. We really have to make them kind of a living document and something. And it's going to be hard at first, but I'm confident given your... your 
well, you'd be surprised <laughs> when things get contentious. But anyhow, that's kind of the purpose of them. So it, it, it's going to take a little bit more process than just, you know, having a group do it and give them to you. Thanks. Okay. Okay, moving right along. Um, we need to come up with some budget subcommittee dates that we can get together because we need to think about a budget that's happening. I know that, but we need to decide um, at this point, hypothetically, when might be good times for any member of our committees to get together. So are there any nights that are not good ones for people? Robin. Um, I'm Sharon is saying the same thing as I am, but what happened to number five, establish new subcommittees? Info um, provided? Did I skip over it? Yes. Yeah. Establish new subcommittees. New subcommittees, exactly. You have the papers here. I mean, I have the papers here. Okay. I will take them home, and um, I probably won't do them tonight, but I might by the weekend. Robin, do you have yours that you filled out? I, I don't. I'm, I apologize. Can, okay. Should I drop Maybe it on your porch? Well, or, we, no, or there's a blank have form one. here. Yeah. Would you like to borrow my pen? Yeah. We have I have forms. Yeah, there are forms there. Somewhere. Tam anticipated this. <laughs> Has everybody else <laughs> passed theirs in? Has everybody else passed theirs in that's here? Yes. Okay. So I need to get it from Now what are we doing? Okay. So I, I didn't really pass it over. It was just I thought I had all the papers here. Um, is there any s night that people can't? I know Jim doesn't do Wednesday night. Wednesdays are typically hard meetings. Okay. So that Wednesdays would not be good. Any other night of the week? Tuesday nights have not been good. Okay. I have given up enough. I knew you had other things that you had to do. Exactly. Yeah. Anything else for Every when's other your? Every Monday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday sounds like. <laughs> Sharon? <laughs> so, <laughs> Deb, what, I mean, uh, my, mine are oh, really. I, I could do the Monday that's not. Okay. My, mine are really time restrictions. So, like so for me, um, Tuesdays and Thursdays are doable, but I tend to run a little later on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So that's, so it's not really not, you. C it can't be that day. It's just that I probably won't be able to make it by seven. Okay. Um, don't we really know, need to know the composition of the subcommittees before well, yeah, we but start? We do, but, but it sort of helps if we know a Thursday night works better, which it sounds like it does. But it's going to work better for then some people then. Choir Thursday night. Okay, so yeah, we have got to wait then. We all have different obligations, yes. so. I wonder if, if a calendar ought to go out for each member to fill out when they're available and if you had that as well as those forms yeah, that then, might help then a you know you could break a tie with with I'll put this person on this committee because yeah. they'll be able to meet that's probably a good idea is that a possibility for people just hand them back their forms and on the form say there's an idea available. wow oh you're um, so smart <laughs> I don't know and it's late I mean <laughs> <laughs> I can just see this calendar nice never yeah. coming to fruition. A great idea, but not people that do Google. The, the days that work or don't work. Oh yeah. yeah. So they're writing what days are good for them. What good? What days are good for you? Peggy. That was fast. Robin's the first one done. Wow. She already had the sheet. <laughs> I know my schedule. Do I have others? No. Okay. My schedule is entirely predicated on child care, so. Oh, my goodness. Are they here? No. Just where? All right. Let's continue to do work as I am looking through trying to find papers. That's Sharon's, and this is Sue's. Oh, you need me to come together. I do, and this is Jim Bell's. So maybe you can give this to Jim at the same time. All right. And there's Jeannie's. Um, Sue did. Okay. So staff changes that was um, given to us. 
and it's pretty self-explanatory. Is there any questions on that? Thank you. It's on this sheet here. Um, report, on report from the preliminary superintendent search committee. I wrote some notes. Everybody that was there, make sure I'm honest. Um, we have met twice and um, are sort of trying to decide how we do want to go. I think it was decided we want to go the interim superintendent route. Um, when I talked today, oh, here's my notes. Um, we've been reached, we have reached out to the surrounding districts with that letter, and I have heard back from both Mahar and Gil Montague, um, and Mohawk. Um, I'm going to be talking to Glenn about an interim superintendent um, idea, Glenn Kucher from MASC. Um, and we want to advertise on School Spring. And I need some direction from probably Glenn on how exactly to go through that. Um, and I understand from what, after I've talked to our attorney, that we need to put a little bit of information on what we look like in that ad. And so I'm going to talk, call Pam tomorrow morning and give her another job and see if she can find last, you had two years um, ago, our ad so that we can do something that's pretty much the same thing. We're looking for a superintendent. Interim superintendent. My question is, if it's similar to the last... <laughs> <laughs> My concern is that we're going to be looking at a superintendent and a business manager starting for fiscal 19. Correct. So that it's not going to be similar to what we advertised when we were looking to hire a full-time superintendent who also had business management certif certification. That's correct, but the demographics of where we are and what our school is like and all of that is what I was wanting to get. I, we haven't changed in three years of what, what we look like. Maybe our enrollment has changed a little, so it'll have to be updated, but I think we can basically use that same, that same ad and change it a little. Robin? So I, just to clarify, and then I have a question. Yeah. What we're looking for is our self-description of who we are, not, exactly. not the job description. Exactly. Um, exactly. And my second question was, given all the discussions that we've had tonight and the discussion about seeking a part-time business manager, would we be advertising for a part-time interim? I'm not sure. I guess that's up for debates. Um, we do need an interim, and whether it's... Um, a one year, a two year, or three year, I don't have any idea. I, I think probably the state is going to force us into a regionalization position before long. And I think at this point we need to think of an interim position rather than a permanent position. Sharon? Um, I know that the select boards from all four towns have asked um, us to, to focus on an interim mm -hmm specifically an interim superintendent and a business manager. Um, I question if we have an interim for one year and this, this grant goes through and it's going to take us, depending on whatever, whichever grant we go with, um, it's going to take us probably two to three years before we see it come into close to fruition. Um, and what are we going to do those other two years? So to me, the discussion also has to be what would, what would it look like if we had um, a three-year person that would cover that distance from now till then? I think that we at our subcommittee meeting talked about that, and Peggy, correct me if I'm wrong, um, I think we th talked of advertising it up to three years within that ad. Is that right? 
Jim? Okay, that's what I thought we were talking about because we feel the same way. I mean, it could be, it could be a one year, but really it'll be probably three before we move on. Um, is your time, Martha? My understanding that an interim position is by definition one year, but that if you hired people for one year and then like Peggy says, uh, like sh sh the, the permanent <laughs> scene doesn't seem to come into view after that one year, you can continue that. Is that a possibility, another way of looking at it, or it, you're considering it, that as well? Yeah, we are. But unless you say the possibility of three, up to three years, I'm not sure that you'd get anybody that would stay for three years. Because yeah. interim might make people think, okay, that's exactly. only one year. Exactly. Although exactly. often you do oh, yeah. have a one-year yeah. position that becomes permanent. To cover us. So, right. so. so just to be clear on the grants that were submitted today, um, in it, it asks you how will you be sustainable in one year from now. So their, their goal is that you have to have an answer to that. How are we going to give you this money, you're going to work on this project, but from one year from now, when you get the grant, how are you going to be sustainable? So it's not going to be a three-year thing. Those grants aren't designed that way. Well, no, but I think Pat answered the question. I don't think we should count these chickens yet. Um, Sue worked on a proposal to the same grant source for $25,000, and now the f there's a floodgate for efficiency grants due today. I predict that um, they're going to group similar proposals and there's going to be subsequent negotiations, and this is a pre-application process, but don't, don't count this as found money yet. I think they're testing the waters too. So that's where we stand anyhow on our, um, our quandary of the search. Um, we did not set a date of when to meet again. So that, yeah, Jeannie? So my, my feeling is that given the um, uncertainty of everything, that it, a one-year interim position with potential for extended years would be the best way to go, um, only because we have too much uncertainty about sustain, you know, we haven't developed the plan for sustainability and working with these other districts. So interim with po potential for extension, mm -hmm. to me, sounds good. Yeah, that, that's what the thought was. David? One word uh, that I heard from Selectman Raymond, and I've heard the word interim about seven or 17 times in the last five minutes, but shared has not been, and I'm hoping that that is understood, although not spoken. Shared? Shared. shared. Also. And interim. Shared and I, interim. I think we need to explore all avenues. I think we don't want to, sh we don't want to pinpoint on shared, and we don't want to pinpoint on, on a, you know, a full time or, or a specific one for us. I think at this point we'd be foolish to have our eyes closed to anything. Does that make sense to people? Mm -hmm. yes. yep. All right, works for me. Um, so now we are to curriculum personnel. We have a exit interview form that the CMP committee worked on. We did staff <coughs> and it's this one here. You can ask a question. I went by it. Did we, you went by that already? We did go by it. Do you have questions for that? Okay. On the exit interview. Well, I think she highlighted. Didn't she do a highlight? Yeah. And the bottom, Cheryl Kathy. I don't see any highlights on it. Not on the exit interview. There's a bolded name at the bottom. No, she has something else. I don't see the staff pages highlighted. Like that would be 
it's a color, right? Oh, okay. No, it's a blonde. It's, it's bold. It's bold. Yeah. It is. But it's usually bolded. It's usually bolded, and the only one I can see is Cheryl Teft has joined um, as cafeteria cashier at Pioneer. Yep, that's the only one. And that's the only one I see. Yep. Okay, thank you. So that hops us again to the exit interview. And I think this is just what we voted on last time. And this is the final one. Am I correct? A subcommittee. Yeah, subcommittee. Um, All right. Just As it was brought to us. Uh, we had requested that the superintendent uh, develop uh, a formal um, letter and form to be given to uh, staff who were leaving the district for whatever reason. And with input, she brought this to the committee, and it was approved by the subcommittee. Mm -hmm. All right. Any discussion on this? Has everybody had a chance to look through it? We recommended it to them. I move we adopt the exit interview letter and interview form. A second. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Good job, Ruth. Excuse me? Good job, Ruth and, <laughs> and Sue. Um, so negotiation subcommittee um, will be the chairs of the subcommittees. So I will let people know as soon as possible, and then we'll have to work a date. No, that hasn't been that way from the nomination. Oh, no, nomination. No, oh, yeah, you're right. So negotiations is whoever signed up for it, and I'll set that. And then we can have the chair figure out um, what dates work for them. They should have written on their papers. So that will be a job that will happen to whomever does that. So yeah. Will that be done by email before the next meeting, or would you be bringing that to the next meeting in December? Um, I would hope that we could get started before the December meeting. OK. I think we need to. So you'll let us know what subcommittee we're on. Yeah. Yeah. So. For your negotiation subcommittee, don't forget that you need to get the um, town's um, uh, representatives representative to come because town. you right. um, you so have to have one of them on the committee. Right. So what we need to do is to get all the select men together to decide on one representative from the town, from one town, to represent us. I so think, I think there's an outline in the. Um, DESE yeah, portal. I think so too. will show you the process to Bob, follow. you have done that before. Mm -hmm. So, um, and there should be, and I think, I believe we send a letter to all four select boards asking them to meet and formalize one person to come and join us. And I'm sure it's always something that they jump at because it's so enjoyable. Not yet, no, oh. I was waiting for them. But You're a real clown. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Bob didn't smile. So I think it would be great too. So, all right. So, um, is there any updates other than what we've covered already? No. Other. Yep, Jeannie. Everyone, and if you're traveling safely, Scott's Thank you. Thank Sounds you. good. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, no other business okay. either. Oops. J yep. Just uh, um, Northfield and Warwick are continuing to work on bringing the respective elementary schools into the state's uh, DOER energy departments, mm -hmm. Green Communities Program, and uh, there was a meeting Tuesday night. We had a training, um, but both energy committees are plowing ahead, and I know uh, Warwick will be ready to submit its second application, which will include Warwick School, which, though new, is um, kind of a beast with respect to heating and such. So we'll be able to uh, get some real cost savings down the line. 
That's fantastic. Anyway, we Actually, can save money. Forgotten. It's good. Um, is there any school committee comments that we haven't made already? Sure. Uh, going back to subcommittee, uh -huh. uh, negotiation subcommittee. Can anyone sit in on that, or is that like closed? No. You, you, it's closed. You know, like, so another member of the board, school board. No, you can't, no, no. It's okay. closed. Oh, I believe. I believe not. I believe no, it's executive session. session. So I don't. I yeah, I don't think so. Um, we have our next meeting. Um, four days before Christmas. Oh. <laughs> Does anybody who is trying to get a million things done in favor of having that one week ahead of that date? Sharon. I make a motion that we move the date of the next meeting to December 14th. Is there a second? David second it. Is there anybody that that will not work for? Wait, I'm sure. I don't know. I don't know. Hang on a minute. <laughs> it's the old That's all right. It's okay. All right. It just seemed like it would make more sense for us as we are becoming crazed at that time of year. And actually, that's a month from now. Yeah. Anyhow, so it makes a little bit of sense. All right, let's move it then. Uh, um, seven o'clock, we will Pioneer. be at Pioneer. All right, so we need to, there's a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor of changing the date? All right, we'll be there. That just seemed like it made more sense. So December 14th at Pioneer at seven. Yeah. All right, um, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor? Who is the second, please? Aye. Aye. Okay. Second.